Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how can tea boost your performance? Performance is not simply a question of how much energy you have. So throw away all of those caffeine filled sugar drinks right now. Performance is a whole set of attributes that allow you to perform at high level day in, day out, week in, week out, and year in and year out. And I wanna to talk to you about what those sets of attributes are, how tea can contribute, and also I'm gonna be introducing you to Fencher, which is a new product which we've been working on for many years, and I'm very proud to finally be able to bring it to you today. So what are the attributes that are required for long-term sustained performance. Well, first of all, it depends on which activities you're going to be doing, but all of the attributes that we're going to be talking about do apply to pretty much any activity. First of all, you need some energy, of course. You do need energy. That energy is going to allow you to work, allow you to perform, and also going to bring focus. So it's very important that you have uh, an energy which is a sustained release energy that's not just sort of a spike and a dump, but is a sustained release energy that allows you to not get too hyped so that you can maintain the right level of activity and focus. Next up, you need to have a sense of calm and a sense of relaxation. So this is the other side of the coin. And so what you want is sustained energy, but also you don't want that energy to sort of bring you to a state of stress or nervousness. So it's very important the stimulants that you choose to ingest for that energy can't bring you to a state of stress and anxiety because stress and anxiety lead to errors, lead to mistakes, lead to fuzzy thinking. And therefore high performance requires clarity. It requires calm. That calm will mean that you make less mistakes, which means that you're going to perform to a higher level over a longer period of time. It's also very important that you are in a state of mind where you're not just calm, but you're also creative and content. So that creative energy allows you to have lateral thinking. It allows you to apply um, solutions that may not seem direct or seem natural to solve problems. That lateral thinking allows you to, to, to shortcut and become more efficient in your work or to find um, creative solutions that uh, leads to more positive outcomes. So creative thought, also it's very important that you're content in your work, that you're feeling happy, that you're feeling that your mood is enhanced because when you're happier, you're gonna be able to work for longer sustained periods and you're gonna be enjoying what you're doing, which will put you into the flow state, which is often talked about by psychologists as the optimum state for performance and also happiness. And finally, and very importantly, and often overlooked, is you need to be able to get good rest and get good sleep when you are not performing an activity. It's very important that anything that you are taking or anything that you are doing in order to boost your performance is not at the expense of your rest, of your sleep, because that sleep is essential for the recharge so that you can go at it again the next day and then you can have long-term performance, which is not adversely affecting your health. So what is it in tea which can bring about those performance attributes? Well, I've done videos before about how the aesthetics of tea, the brewing process, and all of the uh, gong fu setup can help to contribute to your uh, psycho-emotional health, your happiness, your focus, and your presence, which can all affect your performance, as we've just said. I'm not gonna be talking about that Today, I'll put links in the description below if you wanna check out those videos. Instead, I'm gonna be talking today about the specific compounds in tea which can contribute to your performance by changing your physiology. First up is caffeine. Caffeine exists in lots of foods and drinks and is in tea. I've done a whole video about the effects of caffeine in tea. I'll put a link in the description below, but it's worth saying that Caffeine in coffee is, has a different physiological effect to caffeine in tea. Even though it's the same compound, it has a different physiological effect. Number one, because the caffeine in tea is bonded, it's fixed with other uh, compounds, and so it takes longer for your body to break it down. And that means that you get a sustained release of energy. So instead of a spike and a dump, you get a sustained release, and it leaves you in a, a, an energy state which is similar to it as you begun, as a opposed to a lower energy state when you have that energy dump for more free absorbing caffeine. The second reason why caffeine is different in tea is because tea also contains L-theanine. Now L-theanine is 
probably the most important compound in tea as to why tea has been consumed throughout the ages. Not only does it contribute to some of the taste of tea, this sort of brothy, umami to sweet flavor, but it also has immense physiological effects and they happen quite quickly. The first is that it crosses the blood-brain barrier very, very readily. It'll start to affect your dopamine levels, which means that you will start to feel happier. It has a feel-good feeling. It also stimulates alpha brainwave activities, which is that meditative state. So a state of mind which is alert and focused and present, but also calm and creative. And so because you're getting a boost in your enhancement of mood and also uh, a feeling of calm, so that happy calm feeling can sort of um, work with the caffeine so you're getting energy from the caffeine but it's not a jittery energy so much, it's less of a, of a nervous energy and more of, a, of a, an energy which works synergistically with these calming aspects that are brought about by L-theanine. It's also worth noting that L-theanine has a neuroprotective effect so therefore it's going to over the long term help to protect at least your mental function so that will also provide long-term sustained performance. It also, as I said, contributes to creative thinking. Also, tea contains GABA. GABA is a compound, it's a neurotransmitter, which helps to reduce excitability. So again, this is all about trying to maintain calm whilst giving you energy, maintaining calm. So it's smart energy. So GABA helps to uh, put breaks on your uh, overexcitability, it helps to calm you down. I've done videos about GABA, we've done a video about GABA and autism. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description below. And if you are interested in the controversy, let's say, about whether or not GABA crosses the blood-brain barrier, I'll put links to some studies in the description below so you can find out more. Also, tea contains lots and lots of terpenes. These are aromatic compounds that have a physiological effect on your body. Now, don't forget that a plant can't run away, it has no legs, so it uses terpenes to either attract or repel. It uses these aromatic compounds to change your physiology. Um, so the terpenes, may, you may think of it as just a smell or aroma, but they have a very direct effect on your physiology, and so they will also help to uh, start to change your mood, and that will affect performance. Right, so tea contains all of the compounds that I've just talked about in varying amounts, and therefore which tea is best for you, for your performance enhancing or for your activities? Well, of course it depends a lot on your activity. If you are looking for something that's very high energy, that requires a lot of uh, high energy, maybe in a shorter period of time, then you might be looking for teas which are higher in readily absorbable caffeine. Now, a lot of people turn to matcha. The reason why they turn to matcha first and foremost is that it's the highest strength tea. The reason is because you are consuming the leaf. This is micronized tea, so very fine tea powder, and you are actually consuming the leaf, and therefore you're absorbing all of the compounds or a higher percentage of the compounds compared to if you are brewing the leaf and extracting it in water. The second reason is that the leaves used to make matcha have been shaded and that boosts the L-theanine. It means that you have higher amounts of that amino acid which contributes to better mood, to creative thinking and meditative brain wave states. And so a lot of people choose matcha as their tea of choice for performance enhancing. But let's just say it very clearly, any tea will boost performance, it's just about finding the right tea for you. And for me, Matcha is great if I really want a burst of energy, but especially in the morning, I find if I take matcha early, it has too much caffeine for me because I'm relatively caffeine sensitive and I find that it can sometimes give me a little bit of a jittery feeling. So I personally use uh, matcha sort of halfway through the day. So I'll be taking my matcha sort of mid-morning or in the afternoon if I feel like I just want a little energy boost. But um, I'm very cautious about not taking it too early, especially on an empty stomach where the caffeine can just start to give me a little bit too much of a rushy feeling. And so myself and a couple of other people that I've been working with, we decided that we wanted to create a matcha-esque 
drink, so something that uses the same sort of uh, format of as matcha, in other words, a micronized powder, which can be used in a suspension. So when you whisk it up, it say, stays suspended in water, so it's under 10 microns. Um, that has been stone ground at low temperature to preserve all of the nutrients, but to work on the formulation of teas and herbs to provide a formula which provides smarter energy, which can help to boost sustained performance no matter which activity you are doing. And I'm very happy to finally release this formulation. This has taken, I would say, close to five years in the pipeline working. Uh, we first released Fencher in a very, very small batch we only released it in our tea house in London to just test it out, to let our clients try it. We served it at the tea house, we sold it. Maybe some of you out there have tried it already. Um, we wanted to gauge response and we got such great feedback, not just in terms of the taste, but also in terms of the effect that we have decided to finally go for a big run of this. So let me tell you about this tea. Let me tell you about what is in it. So we have used oolong tea in this venture. The reason why I've picked oolong is that whilst it does contain caffeine, it's at a lower level compared with green teas, especially matcha. So we, we're reducing the caffeine level. It does contain theanine, not as, as high amounts as in uh, matcha, but it does contain that mood enhancing theanine. So it's gonna also help to give you a state of calm, creative, meditative, focused, present state of mind. We've also made sure that we've used a GABA oolong so that we have higher levels of GABA. So whilst the theanine level is going to be a little lower than in matcha, we are increasing the GABA content. That means that you're getting this calming uh, reduction of overexcitability to reduce nervousness and just keep you in a very sort of calm, focused, and hopefully a mistake-free state of mind. So we've mixed GABA oolong with a Chinese oolong, and we've made sure that Fencher contains two other herbs, one of which is Panax ginseng. So ginseng is a very, very famous, one of the most famous Chinese herbs with a long, long history of use, many centuries of use. You can look up all of the physiological effects of ginseng by checking out online a Materia Medica, a whole host of performance enhancing and health protective effects of ginseng. So it had to be in this formula. Ginseng is an adaptogen, so it reacts to your body, it adapts, and it can improve endurance, it can reduce fatigue, it can help to improve concentration, help to um, maintain good memory, it can help to um, recover from physical fatigue, can help to improve physical stamina, concentration, a whole host of physiological effects with a long, long history of use. So Panax ginseng is in there. We've also included licorice. And the reason why we've included licorice, not just for the taste, to give it a slightly sweeter taste, and it's not got too much licorice for all of those people who are phobic to licorice, but it just adds a nice little sweetness. But also uh, licorice is an MAO inhibitor, and that means that the beneficial neurotransmitters to improve mood, like dopamine, which are released through the theanine, which is in this tea, so your brain is producing dopamine. We want that dopamine to stick around. So we want the uh, MAO inhibitor, which is licorice, to prevent the uh, or slow down the breakdown of that dopamine so that you can stay happier for longer. So we've really put a lot of thought into this. Believe me, we've tried many, many, many formulations. We've tested lots in terms of taste, in terms of effect, and as I said, once we came upon this Fencher formulation, which we've called formulation number one, because we don't know if there's gonna be any other formulations coming, we tested it at the tea house and with our clients. We got such great feedback that we've decided to do a full run. Let me show you how you can drink this tea. I'm gonna be making it similar to a pure matcha, but just like matcha, you can be using this in any way that you can imagine. It's very, very versatile because it's a powder. You could mix it into uh, lattes. You can make a fencher, fencher chino or a fencher latte. You can mix it into smoothies. So it's very, very versatile. Right, so let's take a look here. You will see that the consistency of this powder is identical to matcha. In fact, I'll put it in this little cup just so that you can 
um, see the color of it. So I'm gonna use one level teaspoon. There you go. You can see the color. Sort of light brown. And I'm gonna be putting this one level teaspoon into a charwan or a bowl. But as I said, you don't need to do that. You could just put it in a cup or a glass and you could use a frother. So you can do it very easily. You could put it in a jam jar and shake it. Uh, we've done videos about that as well. Now I'm using 70 degree Celsius water. You can use uh, any temperature water, but I find with these micronized teas, as you go above 70 or 80 degrees Celsius, you're starting to extract a little bit uh, too many of the antioxidants in the liquor and you're tasting uh, slight bitterness. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, just like matcha, just pour a little bit in just because I want to create a paste. I've got a little matcha whisk here, a little portable one here. And we're going to just make a paste, just get all of the lumps out. It's very, very easy. You don't need to sift or sieve the powder. I know a lot of people recommend that for matcha. I never really understood why that was necessary. If you are good enough with you, with your whisk, you can get out any lumps very, very easily as you can see here. And as I said, you can even just use a, a jam jar and shake it. And now I'm going to be putting in, I'm gonna eyeball it, but around 70 mil of water. So something like that. And it's up to you if you want to froth it. I like to froth it. You know, this is the ancient way of making tea. You know, this is uh, all the way back to the Tang and Song Dynasty. People were making tea froth, especially the Song Dynasty with their Jian Cha teas. So I like to make a bit of froth add a bit of air. You can see it froths up really nicely as well, just like match. You get this ultra fine froth. Now I could keep going, but I think that's enough. And there you go. Your Fencher shot is ready to drink. Let me put this away. Let's give this a taste. Cheers, everybody. Very, very complex taste. There's a a structured acidity to this. Similar to, I would say, the acidity in a good coffee, you get that sort of fruity red currant acidity, but then I'm getting a lot of um, roasted coconut, eucalyptus, um, um, yeah, on, the, on uh, after you swallow this little um, eucalyptus note, there is a roast to it as well, similar to a coffee style roast. So you're getting not a bitterness that comes from the sort of tea antioxidants, but you're getting that, that warming roasty bitterness um, on the back of your uh, tongue. But it's very, very slight. It's very, very understated. And then it dissipates and the acidity um, dissipates as well. And I'm left with a very cooling sensation and a sweet, sweet finish. As I said, the licorice is not excessive. You would sort of probably not be able to guess that there was licorice. Uh, you only know it because I told you. Um, but you're left with this lovely, enduring, long sweetness. Mm. Yeah, it's like a, a slightly like a little bit of a dark caramel burnt sugar. Um, note, vanilla, slight vanilla note. So vanillas, coconuts, um, and uh, nuttiness and roastiness, and then a slight red currant acidity to sort of give it some structure and balance, um, and this very, very long enduring sweetness. Uh, we worked very hard sourcing the producers of these teas and making sure that they grew these teas to organic standards because we are very well aware that you are consuming this leaf. So we wanna make sure that we sourced it very, very well. So you don't have to worry about that. We've done all of the legwork to make sure that this tea can only bring you benefits and it is a delicious, delicious tea. It went down really well in the tea house. People were ordering it a lot. I'm sure a lot of people will be glad to hear that it's coming back. We get asked about it a lot. Um, and making a Fencher 
chino with it is great as well. Maybe use some nut milk, plant-based milk or dairy if you would like. The vanilla note and that burnt sugar and roasted coconut note just sets off a latte and a fettuccino perfectly. It's really, really great. Mm. The effect of this tea, obviously I've drunk a lot of fencha in my time and I can tell you very clearly the effect. It has less of a jittery feeling, for me at least, than matcha does. So I'm not gonna get this rush of energy, but the energy comes and it's sustained and it's long-term. And um, just from one shot, you will feel a sort of rewiring in your brain, a sort of clarity, a focus. It definitely keeps you calm, energized for long periods of time. Um, but more than that, taken over a course, you know, if you take it every day or every other day over a week or two, it also contributes, I find, to just general overall improved concentration. Again, this is my own personal um, uh, feeling and experience, so everyone's gonna react slightly different. But for me, just a general improved concentration focus and crucially, helps to make sure that when I decide to switch off, I can switch off. I feel relaxed enough to switch off. I don't feel overly hyped and therefore I can just relax and it helps to therefore contribute to good quality sleep. So this is Fencher. This is Fencher number one. But as I said, all teas will contribute to performance just in varying degrees and depending upon your reaction to the teas and the activities that you are doing. Um, these micronized teas obviously have a very potent effect because of the fact that you're consuming the leaf. Matcha is great if you really want a real surge in energy um, and if you are not particularly caffeine sensitive, Fencher I think is a great medium where you're getting all of the performance aspects without the jitteriness and the long-term effects of that Panax ginseng. Give it a try if you're interested, it's available online now. That's it Tea Heads, check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea.